Oswald Cobb. Remember him? <laughs> what a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> When Lauren came in and she pitched what she wanted to do in the first episode, the Alberto thing was one of the first things that she pitched. Dylan and I were just like, that's it. That was a really, really brilliant stroke. We wanted to get into Oz's psychology. We're planting seeds that there's something a little bit more disturbing there. It was really important to make sure that you understood Oz and the man he further becomes because of who he is inside. He tells the story about Rex Calabrese. Alberta looks at that and does the one thing you should never do with Oz. <laughs> he laughs at him. They probably do share a similarity, Alberto and Oz, and that neither of them have been taken very seriously. Alberto doesn't see what might be encroaching from any particular side, which is a great weakness when you're living in the kind of worlds that Alberto would be inhabiting. Alberto steps on that third rail, and when he's mocked for that, that's where you see the deep rage and impulsiveness of Oz. Oz is basically recovering from what he's done to Alberto, really, for the rest of the series. This being the first scene of the show was important to us in that fact that it showed Oz doing something brash that he quickly regrets. And then it kind of launches him into the story that we're going to watch in the series. Hey! Oh! Oh, I'm sorry, I'm first Try to steal my shit! Please, please, please. It wouldn't have been that much of a thing to just kill this kid, but Oz has a disability, and he sees this disability in Vic. I think he hears it in the stutter, and Oz, with his leg, understands that Victor maybe hasn't been given a bunch of chances in life. Now you wanted my car so badly, you can drive. Oz is a very peculiar character, and Victor is our entree into who Oz is. Aqua Paradise. It's nice. Yeah, it's nice. He really likes those air fresheners. And yet he also murdered the Falcone boss in the first five minutes of the show. And you can't quite put your finger on who this man is. And that's the point. That's the fun of it. <laughs> in that night, which would feel like this kind of pressure cooker, there would be a turn. The seed has been planted. Maybe Vic is not dead. Whoa, wh whatever you need, whatever it is. Jesus, I need a chance. His relationship with Oz evolves, and that's really more where you start to see who Victor is and how he kind of interacts with the world. There you go. We have a relationship built on status. I got ambition. Teacher, student, you know, master, mentor. Well, maybe it'll be useful keeping you around. That's where the relationship really starts, is give me a shot. Sophia, join us. Oh, I didn't mean to interrupt. When Kristen shows up in the first episode, you feel that, wait, wait, what's this? She's just completely upended everything. Oz is kind of barely holding all this together. It feels like he's gonna get away with it. And then suddenly there's a force of nature that enters and that is Sophia. Sophia would show up basically over his shoulder. We wanted to make sure that she had the power there. They have so much history between them and they both know the score. Sophia, I thought you were still at a... Uh... Arkham? Yeah. No, I've been rehabilitated. She comes out like a real taut wire, just a fuse ready to explode, but has to really like keep a lid on it. Sophia's presence is more dangerous than it may have been if Alberto and Oz didn't play out the way it does. She is a threat. She's a potential obstacle between Oz and him realizing what he wants to realize in this world. In the comic book lore, you don't want to start with Oz as the kingpin. You want to see how he becomes the kingpin. Sophia also wanting and having the same ambitions. How does she become a counterpoint and a real opposition to Oz. Are you nervous, Oz? Nervous? I hate for you to feel nervous with me. Oz really is a character that gets backed into situations and does his best work in figuring out how to save himself. People underestimate you, but not me. I've always known you were capable of more. By the time that he goes to visit his mom and has really at that point decided to run away, she talks him out of that and says, like, no, you, you, should, you should use this to gain power. She's ferociously involved. It's almost like she wants to give him her blood, and her blood is very ferocious, and her blood is very fearless. When she sees any weakness in her son, she can barely stand it. Do you hear the words coming out of your mouth? Yeah. How weak they sound? It's just the two of them. So they have this strange little pact. What you did wasn't impulsive. It was instinctual. 
Even though he would want to be revered and respected, he just needs his mom to say she loves him. This city is meant to be yours, sweetheart. What are you going to do to get it? He then designs a long shot way to see if he can navigate through all of these very dangerous kind of scenarios that he's going to have to navigate through. You start to understand how Oz dodges and weaves and gets through things, and he barely scrapes by by the end of 101. And it felt very emblematic of Oz as a character.